Hello and welcome to Whiskey Uncorked. My name is Brian and we are back with another Scotch Whiskey review this week. And we're not just reviewing any whiskey, we are reviewing a whiskey from a distillery that probably carries with it the most amount of controversy in Scotch Whiskey amongst the enthusiast community. That's right, we are going to be talking about Macallan this week. And it's not just any Macallan, this is not an official bottling, obviously. This is an independent bottling from Gordon and McPhail. It is a 21-year-old expression of their Spay Malt series, which has garnered some pretty positive attention over the last couple of years. So speaking very generally, the Spay Malt line has been recognized for giving you high age statement, cast strength versions of Macallan for relatively affordable pricing. See, this bottle comes in at Still very expensive, but $500 for a 21-year-old Macallan at cash strength, 54.1% ABV to be exact. And this is heavily sherry, just like you would expect any other Macallan to be. And uh, in terms of other reviews and other chatter that I have heard about the Spade Malt line, uh, this whiskey does tend to be quite good. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if a Macallan review draws in some viewers that don't normally watch my channel or other channels like mine looking to find out if Macallan is actually good whiskey. Is it worth the price, right? Beginners, people just getting into the scene and knowing Macallan, knowing how famous of a distillery it is, how ubiquitous of a distillery it is, uh, coming in looking for some more information on it. You also may have some collectors and flippers and investors out there also looking for a good priced, relatively speaking, again, a uh, version of old Macallan. Now, for those of you that aren't typical watchers of Scotch Whiskey community or readers of reviews and this sort of thing, you may be surprised to find out that there's a section of the community out there that doesn't feel that Macallan quite lives up to the hype that the marketing and just the general reputation would lead you to believe. And the reason for that is that Macallan basically sells whiskey that is the antithesis of what we typically would be looking for in terms of a single malt scotch whiskey. Now, not everyone has that opinion of Macallan. Some people have a perfectly fine opinion of the whiskey in the bottle, enjoy drinking it, some enjoy collecting it, many enjoy seeking out bottles for investment purposes and things like that. However, for the, mo the majority of us, we are looking for high quality, well presented in terms of ABV, chill filtration, and natural coloring, all for a reasonable price. Now, generally speaking, McAllen does not hit any of those uh, benchmarks for us. Their whiskey is often thought to be somewhat plain, a little boring, a little dull. It's a lower ABV. It is chill filtered fairly heavily, and uh, they do not use artificial coloring, thankfully, but uh, the biggest issue is their pricing model, which has their bottles priced at absurd levels. Really quickly, just to kind of elaborate on that, whiskey, for the most part, costs the same to make regardless of the distillery we're talking about. Yes, there are going to be differences in manufacturing processes, and energy usage and other creative decisions that they may make with the one big differentiator may uh, being with with the cast that they choose to age their whiskey in now mccallan and dalmore and some of these other luxury whiskey brands will tell you that they use the finest casts the world has to offer every cask is hand selected bespoke from a small bodega in Spain or Portugal or something like that. However, they're a 15 million liter per year distillery, and there aren't that many tiny little bodegas that they are hand selecting casks from. Now that doesn't mean that they don't use quality casks, it just means that they aren't as special in the vast majority of cases as they would lead you to believe. And therefore the pricing really isn't coming from the differentiation in ingredients it costs the same essentially to age whiskeys you know, just because it's the barrel sitting there uh, and the other thing that they will tell you is that their whiskey is very rare 
However, again, they are the third largest distillery in all of Scotland, behind only Glenfiddich and Glenlivet, when their whiskey is definitely not rare, uh, at 15 million liters per annum, as I mentioned. So it's not rare. The, the core range, the 12, the two versions of the 12, Euro, the 15, the 18, these are not necessarily being aged in these bespoke casks that only the best uh, whiskey is aged in, the, the finest bodegas from, from Spain or whatever casks or type of cast that they're using in whatever country they come from. But uh, so the price just doesn't make any sense. And that is almost always the biggest problem with Macallan. If they were priced fairly in the same ballpark as the other uh, whiskey producers, people may forgive some of their other creative choices and may actually be allowed to enjoy the whiskey a little bit more knowing that they didn't just mortgage their house to buy a bottle. Now to hammer home the issue with pricing, McAllen's standard 21-year-old offering, taking a quick look online here, it looks like that will cost me about $2,000 plus tax. Meanwhile, this is $500. Additionally, that edition is bottled at, uh, McAllen's official bottling is 43%. It's chill filtered, and thankfully it is natural coloring, although at that point, uh, most of us are already out of that conversation in terms of picking up a bottle. This 54.1%, as I mentioned, non-show filtered, natural color as well, at one-fourth of the price. So we're getting a truer picture of what McAllen actually produces at a significantly less price, and we can control the experience by, if we want to, if 54% is a little too high for you, you can add some water, you can bring it down, you can find the sweet spot, whatever works for you. So just generally speaking, this is a significantly better deal. In fact, you can do the math and find out if you want to water this thing down to 43% ABV, you can do the math and probably find that you're going to end up with another half of a bottle uh, for free compared to what you would be getting uh, out of the standard edition. And yet I can still hear some of my <laughs> subscribers and my regular viewers kind of maybe cringing and even just talking about McAllen and potentially even enjoying it. And I'm going to spoiler alert. I enjoy this bottle of whiskey quite a bit, but as I've mentioned before in videos and whatnot, like I want to know what the McAllen creates. I want to know what all the distilleries create because I'm a whiskey geek and I love whiskey and I sit here in front of a camera and I talk about it. And I want to tell you my own opinions and I want to make sure that I'm not just regurgitating the status quo and everything else that kind of comes with giving your opinion online. Now, if McAllen's whiskey really truly was just bland, no flavor, and just expensive, even at $500 a bottle, it would still possibly be something that I would be okay uh, just skipping. However, I do know that when it comes to Scotch whiskey in particular, and really any distillery, probably in the world, to be fair, that the whiskey that they produce and the whiskey that they sell are not necessarily one in the same. As I mentioned, these distilleries have a lot of control over how they present their product to the public, whether that's through the filtration and coloring, the ABV they choose to uh, bottle their whiskey at, the marketing behind it, the box, the bottle, they can choose to strip out as much of that flavor as they want through their cuts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these, these massive whiskey factories have a lot of control and they are producing exactly what they want to produce. And then by the time the whiskey makes it in the bottle, they can choose from their casks and present something that is lighter less flavorful and isn't going to be offensive to basically anyone and can continue to stand behind that marketing that people who don't necessarily always drink whiskey or people who are looking to collect bottles and that sort of thing are going to be happy with this product. It's not going to be offensive. It's going to be light. It's going to be fruity. It's going to be a little sweet and nobody's going to be upset at it at all. And they have the label 
and the box and that fancy bottle to tell all their friends that their money was well spent and that they can walk away from that experience feeling good about themselves. But given that fact that the whiskey that they produce doesn't necessarily mean that that's what's ultimately going to make it in the bottle, which sounds strange, but it absolutely is true, it means that they may have some really good whiskey out there. And maybe that's making it into their plethora of special releases that sell for thousands of dollars a bottle. Maybe they have an age statement on it. Maybe they don't. Um, or maybe they're sitting there aging for many, many years so they can sell it for $100,000 a bottle or whatever it is. I don't know. Whatever their plans are for those casks, it's completely up to them. And as long as people are there to buy it, there's not really any reason for them to stop. However, it's not impossible to find Macallan on the independent bottling side of things these days. In fact, Signatory has been releasing quite a few uh, Macallans recently. Maybe this has to do with Macallan's volume dropping significantly in terms of sales. They are still setting records in terms of financial uh, progress, but the actual volume of whiskey... Uh, the actual volume of whiskey that they're selling has been dropping over the last couple of years. But uh, we are getting bottlings from Signatory and these Spay Malt offerings from Gordon and McPhail. And people are starting to notice that McAllen can, in fact, make some pretty damn good whiskey. So being the whiskey geek, as I mentioned, I want to try it. And if I'm going to try some McAllen, I'm going to look towards independent bottlings. I do have a 12-year-old uh, bottling that I picked up at Costco a few years ago sitting around here somewhere that I never opened. I think I might even have like one of the edition sixes that I bought like early on uh, in my in my whiskey journey just because it was a uh, slightly better presented I believe if I remember correctly that's here somewhere <laughs> but and I, and I do actually have a little bit of an SMWS bottling that my brother was kind enough to share with me so uh, at some point, maybe I will do a little bit of a roundup of the distillery and do some direct comparisons. But for the time being, I'm going to focus on talking about this whiskey in particular and uh, giving it some nosing and tasty notes, giving it a score, and we'll talk about value. This is still an extremely expensive whiskey. It's not going to be a good value still, but it's it's the one way that you are going to be able to try some well-aged cash strength Macallan that has been carefully selected by the folks over at Gordon the Fail. And at least if this bottle is anything to go off of, uh, you'll probably enjoy the whiskey inside. 500 bucks, that'll be up to you to decide, I suppose, but uh, I can't say that I strongly regret this. But let's see how this is tasting today. Let's try it on the nose. So this bottle's been open for a couple weeks now, two, three weeks, I think, and I uh, haven't drank a ton out of it. It is. It does still nose pretty warm. You can definitely get the ABV. As long as you don't take a huge whiff of it, it's not going to singe off too many of your nose hairs, but uh, it definitely is packing a bit of a punch. And generally speaking, as long as you take some easy noses and everything, what you're going to get is ch char, leather, uh, some tobacco, real dark red fruits, it doesn't taste part or it doesn't smell particularly sweet on the nose. We'll see how the palate is doing today because this is actually a relatively sweet whiskey. Um, there's toasted coconut, and I occasionally get like whiffs of peppermint. Actually, it's pretty rare, but sometimes if I'm just kind of moving it around, trying different parts of the glass, I will get a little whiff of like a peppermint. And uh, you can say dark toffee, there's vanilla in there, obviously. It's a really nice nose. It's a complex nose. It's something that I have really enjoyed kind of getting to know as the bottle has opened up a little bit. And I do suspect that this bottle will continue to evolve as I drink it. But uh, man, McAllen's even their, uh, their official bottlings. One of the compliments that I hear often even from kind of whiskey geeks who are reviewing it with a little bit of a you know sneer on their face is that the nose is the nose the way it smells is always uh, really really nice it, the problem is is the nose doesn't match up with the palate it doesn't taste nearly as good as it smells but let's see how this one's doing cheers that first sip every time Again, the ABV is noticeable. 
I don't end up adding water to this, at least I haven't yet, because it's really that first sip, and then eventually the, the ABV kind of fades away, and I'm able to drink the rest of the dram without any issue, but there's, with that ABV comes a ton of flavor. It's kind of the way that the nose, uh, nosed, <laughs> the, the palate does match up with the nose at first on that first sip where it's big flavors, it's bold, you're getting those old whiskey notes, barrel char, leather, real dark red fruits. It's not particularly sweet. The same exact thing as we are getting on the palate, on the back, uh, the back half into the finish, right? You're still getting the age. You can get some oak tannins. It's not particularly spicy in terms of baking spice, like that Mortlock 19 year old that we reviewed last week. It's a little bit more in line with like just your dirty sherry notes. The malt is still present. It hasn't been completely drowned out by the sherry casks. <sighs> There's a caramel note for sure, which is what I'm going to be, keep, be keeping an eye on because I know at least from the first few drams out of this is that note's going to change a little bit the more I sip it. And basically what it's going to do is the entire dram is going to lighten up and sweeten and what ends up happening is you get this incredible honey flavor. So let's go in for a second sip and let's see if that comes out a little bit more. Here we go. Yeah, a little bit more. Fudgy. There's more chocolate there. Again, it's not super sweet yet. The oak and dark fudge and probably some espresso, dark coffee. It's more of a toffee sweetness at the moment. Kind of drying between, I think, the age and the oak and the ABV. But it's not bad. It's not sucking the moisture out of my mouth or anything. It's just a very drying sensation. Pretty pleasant, to be honest. I'm going to keep sipping this one because I I can, I, I cannot reiterate <laughs> that the honey flavor that was coming off of this thing, the last couple drams I've had of this, was was delicious. And I can taste it. It's in there. I think I'm still adjusting to the ABV. I think this is probably one that I had like one sip of Tam Dew or something uh, before I turned that camera on just to try to wake my palate up a little bit. But this is probably one that you want to end the evening with uh, just to get acclimated to the alcohol a little bit. But I'm going to do one more sip and see if that honey flavor can come out today. Uh, and I'm hoping so, because that was definitely the star of the show on this one. Here we go. All right, so I'm not quite getting the sweetness I was getting, especially like last night when I was kind of doing my notes and things for this bottle. It's not quite there, but I am getting the honeycomb on the finish that I started to pick up uh, yesterday as well. I think with this one, the sweetness aspect of it changes. It's changed as the bottle has opened up and even as I drink a glass of it. I put a couple drops of water in the last sip here just to see if maybe, I think the ABV is definitely, uh, it's like in the middle of the afternoon here when I when I typically record these. So um, my palate might not be 100% prepared yet for the ABV. And given that this is basically the first thing I drank, I don't blame it, but I know it's there. And uh, I can tell you that is one of my favorite uh, like honeyed notes that I've gotten, um, particularly from a, a sherried whiskey, which absolutely you can get honey from that uh, from sherry casks and this one was it was maybe a little sweet I was thinking that like if you're really kind of anti-sweet whiskey that this might be a little too sweet although if you're getting the experience that I'm having right now it's not really a problem it's definitely a little bit darker dark cherries a little bit of coffee some charred oak that sort of thing a leather tobacco all of the dark heavy notes. Um, there is a slight kind of industrial quality to this, right? You're getting maybe a little bit that dirty sherry. It could be if you're really sensitive to sulfur. Uh, I'm not. I usually don't pick it up that way. Uh, so for me, it's a, it's a benefit. It's a bonus. I love that. But some people really get like true sulfur notes and Again, sometimes with these sherry casts, that's kind of what you're going to get. All right, I usually stick to, to two sips of whiskey during the actual review these days. 
I've already done three, I think, uh, but I did put some water in here and I am looking forward to trying to draw that honeyed note out. So I am probably just gonna go ahead and finish an entire dram during a video, which is rare, but hey, it's a nice bottle. I'm going to enjoy it. And even without that honey dram, it's still fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's just there was that one quality that was really setting it apart from some of the other bottles on my shelf. But here we go. One more shot. Cheers. There it is. As soon as it hit my tongue. That was the best experience uh, that I had today. But when, it, when that's hitting, like the second it touches the tip of your tongue, it just like coats the whole thing in this again I'll say it a million times but it, it's a honey it's unmistakably honey everything else is still there but it kind of moves into the background until the finish the honey stays but you start to get some of those older whiskey notes the the oak the tobacco everything that I kind of mentioned earlier this isn't a whiskey that like evolves a lot as you drink it it's not this complex flavor ride it's it's much more like a consistent experience and it really depends i think on the, the type of sweetness that you're picking up whether whether there's very little of it and it's coming off kind of very kind of dark dried cherries and leather and tobacco or whether you're picking up some caramel or toffee all the way to this just like decadently sweet honey regardless i've been super impressed with this whiskey obviously this is a very good whiskey in terms of like older sherried bottlings that i've had at least bottles that i've owned i can't think of too many that i really truly enjoyed more than i've been enjoying this one regardless of age statement i'm not a huge like sherry lover particularly when we're talking old whiskeys that's really when my love for bourbon casks kick in but i had like a 27 year old glenn dronick one of those single casks that i split with with Kevin and uh, that was a really good whiskey. I really enjoyed it, but I never, I only had half the bottle cause we split it, but and I never really just loved it. It was good, but it never quite struck a chord. It was missing something for me um, that never quite came out. I was, I was hopeful. I still have a couple ounces of it stored away. So hopefully once my palate, maybe, maybe I'm just not good enough at this yet. But uh, this one had character right off the bat. And I can tell if this continues to open up um, in a way that this this may be a, a absolute favorite sherry bottle of whiskey for me, and maybe all around one of my favorite bottles that I've had. Now, it, as I mentioned, it's not ultra complex in terms of its how it changes and kind of the flavor ride it takes you on. This is something that's integrated. It's a very kind of consistent experience once it's on your palate. There is, there is a transition from kind of that sweet to some of the darker the darker notes, but outside of that, it's a pretty, <sighs> linear is such a harsh word, but sometimes you just take it taken on a flavor ride with these things and get the big blooms of flavors and things that surprise you on the finish. That hasn't happened with this bottle yet. This is kind of, kind of complex and uh, unique up front. Now I say unique in a, not unique, like weird, but just the, qu the 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 quality of sweet and dark and heavy and things are. It just really, it's really been working for me. Anyways, I can try to find words to kind of describe my experience with this, and I'll continue to fail. But in terms of a score, man, there was a couple times when this was like really, really singing, like in a dram I had last night when I was doing my notes. Uh, that I was like, could this, could this be a 10? Like maybe and I was like, no, it's definitely not now, but is it something that maybe could be in the future? Once I really get to know the bottle, it's fully opened up and we're really kind of in the meat of the experience. Maybe I kind of doubt it. It seems like in terms of what am I, cause I have drank 10 out of 10 whiskeys before I have not reviewed one yet but I have drank them before and there's just a different experience with those, but I don't give a whole lot of nines either. It's, I have given some for sure, but man, this one just really hits and I am going to give it a nine out of 10. This is a wow whiskey. It's just, 
delicious and there is there are some qualities to this that I haven't found yet in many other whiskeys, especially not bottles that I myself have owned. If you're an experienced sherry drinker and that sort of thing, especially when it comes to older whiskeys, maybe maybe it wouldn't get as high of a score from you. But this is definitely one one of the older bottlings of sherried whiskey that have opened my eyes, so it made me kind of stop for a second, and be like, "Oh, what's that?" Um, and that, and I have tried a few. Uh, pretty pretty solid offerings over the years. So I'm going to give this thing a 9 out of 10, which is wow. I've really enjoyed drinking this. I think I'm going to stick this bottle in the back of the cabinet, try to forget about it for a little while, let the, let the bottle open up, even though there's not, again, I haven't drank a lot of it. You can see the color on this one. It's, it's a very, very nice sherry color. It's not Coca-Cola. You can still see through the bottle a bit. So it's not drowned in sherry. Um, yeah, I could look down because normally I have some left in my glass for once I sign off and I could sit down and just enjoy the rest of it. But I don't because I drank the whole thing on video. Maybe that's a sign. Uh, Value-wise, I, I basically mentioned it already at the be uh, before the review. 21 years old, $500. It's really difficult to ever say that that's going to be a good value. In the scheme of things, in the, in the McAllen universe... Yes, it's a it's a fantastic value. Although, if you love Macallan's version of Macallan, if you love what they normally release in terms of their core range, the 12, 15, 18 year old versions, and yeah, maybe even the 21 year old version, uh, this is probably going to be different. If you love that, this is going to be a change of pace, but it would be an education as well to kind of just know the difference between what a company produces and what they actually sell you aren't necessarily the same thing. So I've been rambling for a little while now. I'm going to wrap this up real quick. I would normally say, hey, let me know what you think of McAllen, that sort of thing, which maybe I'm a little afraid to ask that this time. But have you tried these spay, the spay malt offerings from Gordon and McPhail? What do you think of these? Is this something that you've been able to try a number of? Because this is the only one that I've tried so far. So are they consistently fantastic? Have you had some mixed opinions? How do you feel they compare to the standard offerings? The whole thing. Let me know in the comments. Please hit the like below if you made it this far, because I sure hope you didn't hate the video and still watching it. And uh, hit the sub button if you're new here and you want some more whiskey content, which there definitely will be. But until next week, I can't cheers you with an empty glass. Again, it's throwing off my whole vibe. But uh, I guess I can't complain too much. But uh, thanks for watching, and we'll do another whiskey review next week. I hope you join me. Till next time, cheers.